Hey everybody, it's Shugga Conroy. Welcome back to more Pikmin 2. In the last episode, we completed the White Flower Garden at the Awakening Wood, and we discovered the Perplexing Pool, the third main region of this of this game. And in this episode, we are going to go explore our newly discovered region. This area is the summer region of the game. As you can see, as I said, went over before, each area is based on each of the four seasons. Start in winter, then go into spring, then into summer, and then into autumn. And, oh, I love this. And if you saw there in the fly-in, you can see that there is a yellow onion there. Hmm, wonder what we're going to find there. Maybe those little guys that were up in those trees. Good morning, the white Pikmin lodge with the purple ones in my hole. It would be really bad if you lost all your white Pikmin and it said that. I wonder if it's something different if you have zero white Pikmin. The two types are sleeping well and do not quarrel. I have made them most comfortable. You can call out the white Pikmin by standing in the light beneath me and pressing A. I don't know why I made him sound like Inspector Gadget right there. Separate note, be wary of overworking yourselves. Taking a break and be courageous too. To retire for the day. Okay. He's telling us how to end the day. If you want to end the day immediately, you can go here and press R. If you want to go to Sunset. It's really only there if you really need to save desperately and you just don't want to continue the day. Um, white Pikmin, I guess. Even though they're not going to be very useful. Get it R. Purples. And... Okay, fine. Guys. Might be a bit overkill, though, because we're going to need some space for some more Pikmin, though. But, hey. Over here, we have... A cutscene. Not what I was going to point out, but, hey. It timed well with my commentary, so I'm just going to pretend like it was. Look, off in the distance, wild Pikmin. Wild yellow appeared. Go red. Can you see them, Captain Olimar? They are yellow Pikmin. You encounter them when you crash on this planet, correct? It'd be most helpful if they remembered you. Yeah, like the red ones did. Yes, most helpful. Really, most helpful. Not, not somewhat helpful. Not partway helpful. Most helpful. Okay. Over here, introduction of Wallywogs. These are yellow Wallywogs. One of my least favorite enemies in this whole game. But if you got purples, they can be raped like everything else! Okay. Wallywogs. Really can't stand them. There's dungeon entrance there, though, but we're not going to be doing that quite yet, though, because we're going to... Well, we're going to be doing something else here. What we want to do is we want to get over to where those yellow Pikmin are located as fast as possible. Uh, the best way to do this is to throw your Pikmin up onto this ledge... Button mash, proud button masher of RPGs and RTSs. All you want to do? Okay. Do that. Uh, throw our whites up there next, because they're, you know, the weight of only one Pikmin. And then what we want to do is, uh, not that. We want to throw all of our purples except one up there. We just have one purple here, throw it over there, switch to Louie, have Louie grab that purple, have him throw it up on the ledge, have Olimar go over here. Okay, all 88 Pikmin are up here, but fortunately Louie's down there. Here we go, another new enemy, Swooping Snitchbug, and no, it is not the enemy off in the distance, the enemy off in the distance was named a Swooping Snitchbug, that'd be kind of weird. Alright, swing stitch bugs, they grab your Pikmin and then plant them back under the ground again, though, but if you just swarm them- God dang, that guy got- Man! I don't think I've seen anything get its butt kicked that hard in a long time. Up here, though, this enemy, Fiery Ball Blacks. It's an enemy that constantly emits fire. You do not particularly need Red Pikmin to destroy them, for now you do, but later in the game you will not need Red Pikmin in particular to, just, to defeat them. For the time being, you do. So, if you did some things differently at the uh, Awakening Wood, you would not, though. But, eh, I did not do those things differently, though. So, let's attack him. Uh, having red potion for this kind of helps, though, because these enemies are kind of tough, you couldn't tell. Hence their different appearance. Yep, yeah, okay, there we go. Alright, we did not lose too many Pikmin. That wasn't too bad. Now, I'm actually not going to carry this back, because... Okay, fine. I'm actually not going to carry this back, because... There is something more important that I want to use it for than reds. 
Gee, through process of elimination, I wonder what I could ever be inferring to. <laughs> I swear to God, it kind of sounded like I was talking down to you guys there. I, I, I'm not talking down to you guys, though. It's just the way that it came out of my mouth, I realized. <laughs> okay, so. Make things easier for ourselves so that we can take a shortcut back here anytime we want. We are going to want to destroy this... Well, not destroy. Why do I keep saying destroy for these things? You want to roll them out. We're building them, and I'm saying destroy them. Uh, we're going to have Louie go around here, just so he can meet them on the other side of that bridge. Just so Louie can get over there. That's a way that we can get Louie there quite easily. And I don't know if I said Louie enough times in the sentence, so I'm going to say Louie here a couple more times, though, because the end could not have possibly begun the beginning of a sentence, though, because and cannot begin a sentence, though, because it is a conjunction, and conjunctions cannot begin a sentence. Okay! Let's finish that. And here we have the introduction of sheer wigs. Sheer wigs are basically sheer grubs, but they can fly. Yeah. Really annoying enemies these are, but they cannot devour Pikmin when they are flying, and when they are flying, they will also regain health. But if they are above water when flying, they will lose health because they cannot land and they exhaust themselves. So, yeah. Kind of like how if you force a fly to keep in flight, it will die of starvation before it dies of uh, being too tired, I think is what it is. Come on, guys. Oh, what? Oh, you jerk! You jerk! What the hell? Are you kidding me? I can't do a damn. Dessert! Dessert! That was jerkish. He got on the other side of the gate where I could not do a damn thing about him. That was mean. Game, you suck. Okay, I'm sorry. You suck. That was just not fair. Uh, of course, my luck. Uh, game, you know. <laughs> they're beating up nothing in the cutscene. <laughs> what is this? A strange mold like botanical entity has spread across the ground here. Or you could just say a spider web like thing. There's other plant life suffocating beneath it. Okay, so we're gonna want to destroy that though. Wow, they killed it in the cutscene from hitting it that many times. Okay, well, that's probably a speedrunning strategy somewhere. Okay, I'm gonna destroy this. And that's a fiery blowhog over there, though, but they can't do a darn thing to us. Because, well, the red Pikmin is awesome. Even the red leaves at times, as much as they trip, or trip for that matter. Okay, so as you see here, we have a plant that's right up here. This is gonna be important later. So is that one. Okay. Okay, done. Not bad. And of course they fall in the water, so I can't collect them. Alright, took care of all this. So, what we want to do is go on and go up here and whistle. And, just like the red Pikmin, the yellow Pikmin listen to us upon rediscovery. Because we have a shiny whistle that they like. And kids, if there's one thing in life that you learn, it should be this. Shiny is good. <laughs> Yellow Pikmin have climbed down the tree and are staring in this direction. They appear to have like high places and seem quite light. Also have very large ears. I, if I had named them, I would have called them Ear Pikmin, but I will name give them use the name Olimar gave them. I'm curious, my static electric sensors are reacting violently. What could this mean? There's a double rainbow. <laughs> okay. Um, yellow Pikmin are different from the yellow Pikmin that were discovered in the first game. These are not Pikmin that carry bombs and can be thrown high. Instead, they can still be thrown high, but they are immune to electrical hazards, which are new to this game. So, yeah, they actually have a new purpose in this game that was not in the first one. Uh, whenever you have multiple colors of Pikmin that have onions... Uh, it'll go to either a random num it'll either go to a random color or to whatever color is helping carry that the most. So we had one yellow and then the rest of them are whites. So as a result, uh, where'd my whites go? What the hell? Okay, for a second there I thought they glitched through the ground. I was like, I thought that glitch got fixed after the first game. Okay. Uh, yellow onion's gonna be here on the first day that you find yellows though. So. We have a crisis that uh, the onion has stopped producing Pikmin seeds. Is it a malfunction? Wait, intriguing. Reading show and increase the number of Pikmin inside the onion. Apparently, the onion will not allow more than 100 Pikmin on the planet's surface at one time. Okay. <laughs> Your reports are lacking some very important details. Uh, okay, so. As you can see down in the corner, 
We have a 5, a 100, and a 101. Now that we have had more than 100 Pikmin, it's time that I explain that. First number is how many Pikmin you have with you. Second is how many Pikmin are in the field total. The third number, though, which is what I have yet to explain, is I think I've yet to explain. Okay, seriously, what, what the heck? Why can't they carry it? If this thing has a glitch that I can't... Okay, good. Thank God I can carry it. If I could not carry that, that would have screwed me out of so many yellow Pikmin that I need. Uh, that third number is how many Pikmin you in total have sprouted. Uh, combined between in the onion and out of it. So, that is how that works. That. Uh, now, if you might remember, I criticized yellow Pikmin in the first game for not being very useful because, plain and simple... There really aren't that many times in the first game where bomb rocks are helpful. They're kind of helpful, but not really. And hey, what is this? Over here, we have a new enemy, the Ravenous Whisker Pillar. What you want to do is attack them. No, you want to attack an enemy. Yeah, you really needed me to commentate that. Knock them off of the plants. Come on, guys. Can you guys get them off, please? Because I really, really need those berries that they're eating. Come on. Oh, wow, it's dead. Okay, swarm it, swarm it, swarm it. Okay, good. Now, what's really creepy about these enemies, watch what happens when you carry them. They still squirm even though they're dead. <laughs> I don't know why. I just thought that was weird. Here we have the introduction of bitter berries. Just like the Pokemon. Um, come on. Let's hit him. Hit him right, hit him right. Come on, Louie. Come on, Louie. You can do it. Put him up, put him up, put him up. Well, I like how it's not phased at all by Louie's punches and it's just going about its merry way like nothing's happening. Okay, that one's dead. Good. Okay, so we're going to carry these back to base just like we did with the red berries, and we're going to be seeing what those do in just a moment. Uh, switch back over to Olimar. Where is oh, okay. For a second there, I didn't remember where Olimar was. I was like, wait, where the heck is this? I am organized. Duh. Now that we got these. What the? Oh, great. There were sheer wigs on the way back. Wonderful. Just wonderful. Forgot there were sheer wigs on the way back where those berries were going through. Of course. I think we only had reds carrying those, though, so I'm not hurting too badly, though, but hey, two deaths out of carelessness. I'm such a nice person for not really caring. All right, Ultra Bitter Essence. Does not have any monetary value, but I shall research potential uses for it. Okay. So he's going to ask us to bring him another specimen. Not like that's hard, because we have, like, ten of them going right to him. So we've done that. Th thrust. Toss our yellow Pikmin up here, because they can be thrown higher than other types of Pikmin. And once we got ten of them up there, they're going to carry this down, so we got a treasure here. First treasure of the day, ironically, I think. I hope it's the first treasure of the day, or I am really stupid. Um, where are those shirts? There's the Sherwoods! Hey, buddies, how's it going? Kill you! Kill you! Kill you! Thank you for dying. And I was just thinking, where are our purples? Okay, let me look at my map, because this is kind of not good to not know where my purples are. Okay, they're there. Okay, good. Thank God. I thought I might have lost track of my purples then. Oh! I completely lost my train of thought. Uh, after getting... Before I got interrupted, I was going to say that I criticized Yellow Pikmin of not being very good. Sorry about that. Uh, in this game, Yellow Pikmin are actually very good. I know. I can't believe it either. Uh, the th reason for that is that electrical hazards, the hazards that they are, are immune to... Electrical hazards are instant death in this game. Yeah, they are immune to something that is instant death. Plus, in this game, their ability to be thrown higher is a lot more commonly used. Whereas in the first game, you only need it a few times in the whole game. And we have the Impediment Scourge. It's a bottle opener. Okay, so. We've gotten that. We have our yellows, we have our reds, so we're doing pretty well. We want to go and get our purples really quick. I don't know if we're going to enter a dungeon today. You know what? We probably should, but we're going to probably end this video off in a few minutes, though, because, well, we're kind of cutting it close, I guess. Well, not really cutting it close, though, because there's no time limit anymore, but still. Just don't want to chance it. Just don't want to have too long of a video, because I understand not everybody has time to watch a long video every single day of their life. 
as much as some people do, others don't, so I don't like to keep the videos too long. I only had the videos really long at the end of Okami, though, because I was going to be traveling a lot for like a month, and I wasn't going to be around to finish the series for a long time if I didn't. Um... Are you serious? All those berries got back to the ship, though, but after ten berries, it still didn't... Wow, um, okay, I guess we're not doing a dungeon today, though, because I want to get that potion made, because that potion is really helpful. I don't know, we might have time to enter a dungeon, I don't know, I'm gonna try, but at this rate, it's not really looking too like that. Ah, it's almost sunset, okay, so if we're gonna be doing that dungeon, it better figure out how to make that potion with these berries really freaking fast. Please do so, ship. Please. I really need these potions. I really want them before we go tackling another dungeon. Ah, uh, we're gonna have a hundred. Oh, good, 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 good. Okay, good. I think we might actually be able to do this just yet. Okay. So we have now discovered bitter potion. Purple potion, rather. So, he's completed the research. The ultra bitter spray. It is, its official name is neither of the two things that I've called it in the past 10 seconds. Untested, but I believe it will be highly effective. Approaching enemies and press up to spray them. Okay. When necessary, I can produce one bottle of spray from ten berries. There's a limited, a very limited number of berries in this game where you can obtain these, though, because trust me when I say this, purple potions are almost as overpowered as purple Pikmin are. Yeah, they're that good. Alright. Let's see how we're doing on numbers for uh, getting more potions. We have six, and this will bring us to eight. Uh, I'm hoping the 10 second countdown doesn't pop up. Okay, good. So, with very little time left on the clock, oh, da, 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 da. with very little time left on the clock, we're gonna rush to that dungeon that is right near base because I want to start that. Okay, here we go. Looks like I success successfully discovered it in time. Don't know what I'm saying. My sensors are giving out foreboding signals. These signals could very well mean that this hole is filled with wretched, nasty bugs. Vicious program terminating bugs. Not those kinds of bugs, buddy. Bugs, buddy. <laughs> Bad pun without intention. This here is the Citadel of Spiders. If you do not have yellow Pikmin before going in here, I would not recommend entering it. So, yeah, because we have yellow Pikmin, we're going to be entering with 100 Pikmin. So all of our purples, all of our whites, all of our yellows, and most of our reds. Very good. And now that we have entered the Citadel of Spiders, I think we're going to cut this here. So, next time on Pikmin 2, we are going to begin exploring this dungeon, the Citadel of Spiders. See you guys then. I hope you're excited for that as the Pikmin, apparently, where we whistled all 100 of them.